the moment, Sally is still on a school excursion to the Garden of Babylon in Eukaryotopia. The city is known for its greenery and organic produce. It has a lot in common with plant cells, so Sally has learned heaps about cell structure and organelles. Remember, an organelle is an organised, specialised structure that is found in a eukaryotic cell. Some organelles are bound by one or more membranes. In this second lesson on plant cells, we'll continue to explore the structure and function of plant cell components. During the HSC biology course, you should learn the function of each individual component which is linked to its structure. You should also understand that each component of a plant cell has a distinct function and all the components work together to keep the cell alive. If you remember from the previous lesson, plant cells are separated from their environment by a cell wall and a cell membrane. Everything inside the plant cell is the protoplasm, which is mostly filled with cytosol. The protoplasm can be divided into the cytoplasm and the nucleus. The nucleus stores all the hereditary genetic information in the cell. It controls and coordinates all cell activities. This lesson will focus on organelles responsible for the synthesis and processing of biological molecules, including the endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes and Golgi apparatus. We will also cover organelles involved in producing energy and nutrients, the mitochondria and chloroplasts. In the third lesson, we'll look at organelles involved in storage and cell structure. These include plastids, the vacuole, and the cytoskeleton. Let's move outside the nucleus and explore organelles involved in building and processing biological molecules. The endoplasmic reticulum is an organelle involved in transporting and processing proteins and lipids. Remember, proteins are made of polypeptides, or long chains of amino acids, while lipids are long hydrocarbon chains, such as fatty acids. The endoplasmic reticulum connects the nuclear membrane, which surrounds the nucleus, to the cell membrane, which surrounds the entire plant cell. It forms a network of flattened, interconnected membranes that are known as cisternae. The cisternae are composed of one phospholipid bilayer, which is made from two layers of phospholipid molecules. These phospholipid molecules are comprised of a phosphate head and a fatty acid tail. We'll discuss the phospholipid bilayer in our upcoming videos on the cell membrane. Let's check up on Sally. The tour bus is driving to their next stop, following a long, winding road that connects the city centre to the outer suburbs. These roads transport the local residents around the city. Organic produce and other materials produced in the city centre are also transported along the winding roads. In fact, the roads that connect the city centre to the outer suburbs resemble the endoplasmic reticulum which connects the nuclear membrane to the cell membrane. Of course, materials produced by the nucleus are transported by the endoplasmic reticulum to other locations in the plant cell. The endoplasmic reticulum can be rough or smooth, depending on the presence of ribosomes. Remember, ribosomes perform protein synthesis. We'll discuss ribosomes later in this video. Now, the rough endoplasmic reticulum has ribosomes attached to its surface. It processes proteins made by the cell and produces lipids. Meanwhile, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum has no ribosomes attached to its surface. It is a site of lipid production and membrane production and repair. In the meantime, Sally has been looking out the bus window. Some of the streets are crowded with construction companies building new houses and factories. As the bus continues, Sally notices that other streets are totally empty. The tour guide explains that lots of new buildings are being made, but only in some areas of the city. 
the streets lined with construction companies are just like the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which is covered with ribosomes. These construction companies build new houses, similar to how ribosomes build proteins. Meanwhile, the empty streets are like the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, which lacks ribosomes. A ribosome is a small organelle commonly found on the rough endoplasmic reticulum or in the cytoplasm. Ribosomes perform protein synthesis, that is, they carry out the genetically coded instructions of DNA to make proteins for the cell. Ribosomes are composed of proteins, which are made from long chains of amino acids, and ribonucleic acid, which consists of a long chain of nucleotide bases. Wow, Sally can barely count all the construction companies that she can see around the city. They build factories and apartments throughout the Garden of Babylon. They even produce their own building materials. Just like a construction company, a ribosome builds structures and materials that are used inside a cell. Proteins. The Golgi apparatus is also found in plant cells. The Golgi apparatus is an organelle that packs and sorts cell products, such as lipids and proteins, so they can be transported within the cell or secreted out of the cell. Each cell product is packaged in a vesicle, which is a small sac enclosed by a membrane. Like the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus forms a network of flattened membranes, or cisternae. However, they are not connected and lack ribosomes. Remember, the cisternae are composed of one phospholipid bilayer, which consists of two layers of phospholipid molecules. These phospholipid molecules are composed of a phosphate head and a fatty acid tail. Finally, Sally has arrived at the post office. She watches eagerly as farmers bring in their organic produce. Workers in the post office sort the fruits and vegetables, package them into boxes, and deliver them to other cities. Wait a minute. Just like a post office, the Golgi apparatus sorts, packages, and delivers cell products. Instead of fruits and vegetables, lipids and proteins are packed in vesicles and transported to locations inside the cell or outside. Now, let's look at organelles involved in producing energy and food for plant cells. The mitochondrion is an organelle that is the site of aerobic cellular respiration. If you recall from Year 10 science, aerobic cellular respiration involves the conversion of glucose and oxygen to carbon dioxide and water, releasing energy which can be used by the cell. This process is called aerobic cellular respiration because oxygen is needed for the reaction to occur. Each mitochondrion is surrounded by two membranes, an outer and an inner membrane. The inner membrane is folded into cristae, which are small ridges. Both membranes are composed of a phospholipid bilayer, which consists of two layers of phospholipid molecules. There are other components inside mitochondria, but we'll discuss them in our upcoming videos on aerobic respiration in the topic cell function. Let's check up on Sally. Her class has arrived at their next destination, the power station. In the Garden of Babylon, they burn wood to produce energy to run the city. Actually, the wood-fired power station is pretty similar to a mitochondrion, a powerhouse of the cell. While the power station produces energy for the city, mitochondria produce energy to run an entire plant cell. Now, the mitochondria could not function without the glucose supplied by chloroplasts. A chloroplast is an organelle that is the site of photosynthesis. If you recall, photosynthesis is a series of chemical reactions that convert carbon dioxide, water, and energy into glucose and oxygen. Glucose is a type of sugar which is used by plants to store energy from sunlight. 
Chloroplasts are green in colour due to the pigment chlorophyll, which is a molecule that allows plants to absorb sunlight. We'll discuss the components of chloroplasts further in our upcoming videos on photosynthesis in the topic cell function. Similar to mitochondria, each chloroplast is surrounded by two membranes, an outer and an inner membrane. Both membranes consist of a phospholipid bilayer, which includes two layers of phospholipid molecules. At the moment, Sally's class is visiting some greenhouses near the power station. The greenhouses are specially designed to capture sunlight for growing organic fruits and vegetables, which are the pride and joy of the city. In many ways, a chloroplast is like one of these greenhouses. While a greenhouse captures sunlight to produce food for the city, a chloroplast uses sunlight to produce energy in the form of glucose for the plant cell. Let's revise what we've covered in this lesson. Firstly, it is important that you remember the components of a plant cell, and secondly, you should know the function of each component. The endoplasmic reticulum is an organelle involved in transporting and processing proteins and lipids. It consists of a phospholipid bilayer that forms a network of flattened, interconnected membranes, or cisternae, that connect the nuclear membrane to the cell membrane. The rough endoplasmic reticulum has ribosomes attached to its surface, while the smooth endoplasmic reticulum does not. A ribosome consists of proteins and ribonucleic acids and performs protein synthesis. Ribosomes can be found on the rough endoplasmic reticulum or float freely in the cytoplasm. The Golgi apparatus is an organelle that packs and sorts cell products for transport within the cell or secretion out of the cell. It comprises of a phospholipid bilayer that forms a network of flattened membranes or cisternae. The mitochondrion is an organelle that is the site of aerobic cellular respiration, so it produces energy for the cell. Mitochondria are surrounded by an outer and an inner membrane, which both comprise of a phospholipid bilayer. The inner membrane is folded into cristae. The chloroplast is an organelle that is the site of photosynthesis, so it absorbs sunlight and stores the energy in the form of glucose. Each chloroplast is surrounded by an outer and an inner membrane, which both consist of a phospholipid bilayer. To finish, this table summarises the key points of this lesson. Pause the video if you would like to read it for yourself. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons on biology, check out our third video on plant cells.